Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video I'd like to show you how to model a spring and how to put that spring into an assembly so that the assembly actually shows the spring green uh, expanded and compressed. It's a fairly easy thing to do, but you do have to set up some relationships. So, let's go ahead and get started. Let's just create a, a simple spring. I'm going to open up my temple file. And this is a little bit different than the way we open up temple files typically, but it's typical the way we open up temple files in our class because the computer doesn't work very friendly towards the students, if you can believe that. Which is the way things are there. But anyways, we're going to start with the top plane. And we're going to draw a circle. Now a helix is based on a circle. And our spring is going to be based on a helix. And helix is a feature. The feature is based on the sketch. And the sketch that helix is based on is a circle to begin with. So we're going to create a circle. It's going to be a, a two inch circle. So we're going to type in two there. Kind of fit it to our screen. And because this is our temple file, we're going to go ahead and save that right away. So we're going to get back up, back up copies of that. So I'm going to put that into my flash folder, uh, probably my prep folder. I'm going to make that week five. Uh, you don't have to do it this way necessarily, but do make sure you put it in a folder that you can retrieve it in. And we'll just give it today's date, which is 13.01.26, spring. Okay. There's a two-inch circle. Let's go ahead and rebuild that. And now we have a circle we can build our sketch on. So let's go ahead and select that. Go to Features and we're going to go to curves and helix and spiral so it automatically starts us with the height and pitch and uh, I was playing around with variable pitch before but we're going to stick with a constant pitch now just for this demonstration and we'll go into something that's a little bit more complicated in a different video at a different time so we have a couple different choices height and pitch height maybe a, an 8 inch spring, uh, spring. And uh, the pitch of that spring uh, is the distance between one rung of the spring and another. So if it's an 8 inch spring, maybe there might be a quarter inch between that. That, was how, that would be how you would define that. So an 8 and then the pitch would be maybe a quarter of an inch. Kind of a tight spring. If you want to make it a little bit less tight than that, maybe half an inch would be okay. And of course, yellow gives you the preview. Yellow is a preview color. Uh, reverse direction, uh, if you want to you know, make it go down, you can do that. You can go counterclockwise or clockwise too, depending on uh, whatever uh, you desire doing. It does give you, uh, you know, uh, it initially uh, it implies and uh, will default you to clockwise. And you can uh, begin your start angle. If you want to do your start angle at a very specific location, you can do that too. So those things can be changed uh, depending on how you would like it. If you want to put a taper to it, that's okay. Maybe a five inch or five degree taper, so you can see it going up like that might be uh, appropriate for like maybe a, a terminal or not enough, uh, or you know a terminal spring perhaps but uh, we're not going to taper the helix so we're going to keep it as it is and then we're going to go to the green check mark and then we're okay so now we're going to put in a uh, plane and we're going to use that uh, plane for a profile so what, we're, what we've done now is we created a path for our sweep and now we're going to put a plane in there and we're going to create a profile for our sweep so we can probably call that our uh, path, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put on our uh, plane, which is, uh, gives us the ability to draw that profile. Uh, we could probably use one of the standard planes, since we do this right in the middle here, we could probably use the front plane or the right plane for that. But the problem with that is that these planes are not going to be perpendicular to our uh, path. So in order to get something that is perpendicular to the path, we're going to have to enter some reference ge geometry, insert uh, some reference geometry. So this is what we're going to do, we're going to click on plane, it is a feature too, because this feature is based on some sort of a uh, uh, sketch or uh, geometry that's already existing on our model. So we're going to click on plane. We're going to click on the spiral on uh, the helix here, and then we're going to uh, click on a point in the very end of that. So what that does uh, with that point, our second reference is going to be the helix itself. And that should give us a plane that's going to be perpendicular to the helix. And then uh, green check marks. So that's the plane we can do our profile on. So on that plane, let's go ahead and draw something. It's going to be a circular feature. So we'll just draw a circle out here. We'll give it a specific dimension. Uh, maybe 0.25. We're going to take the center of that circle. Click on the helix itself and pierce it. Now we exaggerated this and put it up uh, top. So it's going to, SOLIDWORKS is going to uh, go ahead and uh, do a Pierce relationship at its convenience, probably the closest intersection of this uh, helix and that point. So it goes over there rather, rather than over here. So let's do something different. Let's move that off and maybe move this down. If we put it down here and did the same thing, clicked on that point and the helix itself and did a Pierce, 
Again, it's going to choose some place that's going to be convenient for it. So either way, any place should be good. Now this is black, but the helix is blue. The helix is pretty well defined. You can't really uh, press it up and down, but it is blue because it is a curve. This is black because it's uh, fully defined in reference to that uh, curve that was put in there. So we're going to go and accept it as it is, and we're going to go to rebuild. Now with the sweep, you have to have two independent sketches. The two independent sketches that we have right now are going to be the, the helix, uh, which is a feature, not really a sketch, but it is independent. And then we have our sketch two, and our sketch two we're going to call that our profile. Okay, now we're ready to do our sweep. Go to features, sweep boss base. So it was asking over here for a path. If you just press your cursor over the, the green box, where it's asking for an input, it's asking for the profile. So we're going to click on that for our profile. Our path is going to be the helix. And up and down, it gives us a resolution of that. And there we have it. So there's our, uh, there's our spring at least a rudimentary spring. It's eight uh, inches tall and uh, it's got a pitch and we can go back in there into the helix and define that a little bit better. So it's got a height of eight inches. The pitch is half an inch so between one rung and another it's a half an inch and if you remember our profile is a quarter of an inch so there should be a quarter of an inch gap between uh, one rung between the, the, the substance of the spring and the void that's in between that. So, you know, conceivably, theoretically, it's going to compress to about four inches at its most, and if you want to expand it in tension, it can go uh, well beyond uh, eight inches. So that's that, and as long as we're in the helix, let's talk about the different uh, options we have. We did height and pitch, but you also can do pitch and revolution. Remember, the pitch right now is half an inch, and then revolutions, you need a specific amount of revolutions, you could define it that way, too. And you could also define it over here by these uh, dialog boxes that pop out to define the very end in the very beginning of our helix. So the pitch of a half an inch at 16 revolutions will also give us, give us that 8 inches. We could also do height and revolution. So right now keeping the same parameters that we have before, we have a height of 8 inches and the revolutions at uh, 16. So height of revolution, pitch and revolution, and then height and pitch are the options. It gives us the same spring, but it gives you different ways of being able to define that. One last way to define this is a spiral. The spiral is actually a 2D feature and kind of like grooves on an old record and uh, some people have probably never even seen in a long playing record but like grooves on a record it also can define it that way too. So the pitch is still a half an inch. It's a half an inch between the rungs between the yellow lines that you see in there. 16 revolutions start angle at 90 degrees and clockwise as opposed to counterclockwise. If you do the green check mark There we have it. Now it didn't really start in the middle. So let's see why it didn't do that. If we go to the sweep, uh, go to the profile of that. Okay, so it started right there. Now let's go ahead and show the, the spiral, let's show the you know the helix. So it started here. So if we take a look at that, to see how this thing resolved. It actually started there and then moved out. So if we actually had the intersection of that profile a little bit closer to where the beginning of the helix was, it, re it would resolve that a little bit better. So that's enough for this film. I'm going to go ahead and go in some additional options in the next film, and I'll show you how to uh, create an assembly to be able to put that spring into so that the spring actually interacts with some of the moving parts of that assembly.